Let's too. bring in Roger Kosick because I have got some question for Roger. Roger, thank you so much for giving a couple of minutes. We really appreciate it. I know you're busy. Thank you so my, much, my, sir. My pleasure, guys, always. All right, so now they're going to appeal. The NFL is going to appeal. So right. what happens moving forward? Is this just the NFL wins and then the NFLPA appeals? I mean, where do the appeals stop, and when is this going to be officially done? Okay, so it, it, it goes from the district court, where Judge Berman is a judge, the district court, right? And right. then it goes to appeal to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Now, the next one up is the United States Supreme Court. They don't take many cases. Um, they only take cases which in which there's sort of a broad national uh, interest. Now, and, and, and that's sort of an interesting part of this case. I mean, there are those who believe, and, you know, I'm one of them, that, that uh, Judge Berman's uh, decision on this case, in some ways... Uh, you know, it goes into uh, what we thought, or a lot of people thought, was pretty settled law about arbitration. Um, and he says he read into this contract and uh, into the arbitration that uh, there was a there was a a necessity for uh, uh, the league, uh, Roger Goodell, to act in a fairer manner than he did. And I, my argument was, look, you agreed to let him be the arbitrator as well as the one that appeals his own decision. What made you think that Roger Goodell, the enemy, was going to be anything but unfair? Uh, you, you agreed to this. There must have been a reason to it. Judge Berman said no. Uh, even in the worst of circumstances, namely something like this, there is a requirement of fairness. I never, by the way, I never thought this was a fair hearing. Nobody ever thought this was a fair hearing, but we thought that in many ways the union had given up their rights to argue that by what they agreed to in the collective bargaining agreement. The judge says we're wrong. Roger Kosak, having said all that, I mean, this is based on legal deficiencies, not on guilt or innocence of Brady, but did you see this decision coming, or was well, this something that was more of a surprise? I, you know, I had been pretty strong. I thought, uh, I, I thought that the, the league was going to win this. I also thought that it was an unfair hearing. I thought Goodell had stretched himself out too far. But when you read the collective bargaining agreement, there's nothing in there. That, I mean, when you agree to let the enemy be the one that decides what, what you know, your grievance. You know, why did you think there was going to be any kind of fairness? And this right. really wasn't a very fair hearing. No, but you agreed to it. And so I thought that was the way this was going to come down. I thought perhaps Judge Berman would write a, a sort of a scathing opinion saying this is an unfair process, this isn't the way it should work, this isn't good, but you guys agreed to it. Uh, no, I didn't see this coming. Um, and, you know, uh, Judge Berman feel, felt and, and that, and uh, certainly I respect him and accept his opinion, that, uh, that even in the worst of circumstances, there is a, uh, uh, an unlaw- underlying sense that even if it's not spelled out articulately, if there's a sense of fairness and that Goodell just went too far. Is there a bigger message that he's sending? Because one of the things that jumps out at me when he talks about the Wells investigation and puts quotations around the independent right. investigation, was there a bigger message being sent by him here? Well, look, uh, look, there's a big message that we can take away right now that's, you know, clearly if I was representing the National Football League, I would sit down and say, boys, obviously we're doing something wrong. You know, we lose case after case after case after case. I think this is the fifth one. So it's clear that something, their interpretation of what their powers are, at least when it gets to the court, is wrong. Uh, uh, so... Yeah, you know, is there a bigger picture here? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the bigger picture here is, like I say, if I was the NFL, I'd sit down and say, uh, you know, we got to go to Plan B. Now, if the NFL wins this appeal, you said the next step could be the Supreme Court. Now, I'm not going to ask you. That's the, the only appellate court left. Now, yeah. would they even hear it if the players wanted to go there? You know, that's a, that's a question that's tough to answer, and I'll tell you why. You know, the Supreme Court, unlike these courts, ha- don't have to take and doesn't take every court, every case that, that is, uh, they're asked to, to review. They take a very small number of cases they're asked to review, and they usually take those cases that they feel that the law has to be clarified, or if you get, you know, we're talking about the Second Circuit, but they, I think there's 11 or 12 circuits. So if one circuit says one thing and another circuit says something else, uh, then the Supreme Court takes it to clarify a dispute between the circuits. So it's hard to say. I, I think it would depend on how uh, the Second Circuit, uh, you know, writes its opinion. If they write an opinion that says, uh, they, and they reverse Judge Berman based on the fact that he 
uh, that he disturbed settled arbitration law or settled contract law, then there's a chance. If they just look down and say, well, Judge Berman said there should be fairness and everybody should be fair, uh, then they're going to let it sit where it is. What, what is it like when you go into that appeal after, an, after a loss? Well, you know, you go up as a loser. Uh, the law says that uh, there's a presumption uh, in when you're taking up an appeal that the deference is given to the winning side because the judge has already made a decision, and uh, it doesn't start off equal. There's deference given to the winning side, so now the league comes up a loser, and uh, they're, uh, uh, you know, they, they're going to have to convince the this, this Second Circuit, the three-judge panel that will hear this, uh, that there was something wrong. That doesn't mean they lose, but it means that they probably have a higher... Uh, burden than the other side. Now, I, you know, I think that also explains why they didn't go in and ask for a stay. I think it would have been really tough for them to get a stay under these circumstances. And what's the timetable for the NFL's appeal to be heard and judged? Uh, hard to say. Uh, it could be months. It could drag on to next year. Uh, it, it, you know, it depends on what their calendar is like. And uh, they have, you know, this, to us, this is the, the most important case. Sure. Uh, but they have a whole lot of things uh, on their on their calendar, and this is just one of them. All right, Roger, thanks for your expertise, man. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, pal. Bye-bye.